human skin comes in a whole spectrum of colors. Strangely enough, scientists have only just been able to find the genes that define the skin color differences between races. What is the biological basis of human skin color? An international team of scientists has recently found a key to that puzzle. The Goldberg Variations by Johann Sebastian Bach, a great work and a challenge to play. At the piano is Dr. Keith Cheng, a genetics researcher. His work recently made the cover of the journal Science in a subject he did not expect, the color of human skin. Keith Cheng was surprised because he specializes in the genetics of cancer, working only with the minnow-like zebrafish, or danio. It is easily raised in the lab and reproduces quickly, with an embryonic development that is easy to study. These three characteristics make it an ideal test animal prized by researchers. Dr. Cheng focuses on genetic mutations that cause cancer. He tests the effects of certain genes on different varieties of fish. One of these is the golden variety. The skin and stripes of golden zebrafish are paler than those of the normal wild variety. Their hue is a result of less pigmentation in the skin. It seemed like a detail, but Dr. Cheng was intrigued. To uh, do my proper job as a biologist, I needed to know what the basis for the decreased pigmentation was. Now, our pigmentation is contained not just in floating around at random, it's, it's in packets, uh, cellular packets of pigment called melanosomes. At first glance, under the microscope, there was no difference between the packets of pigments in the golden variety and those in the normal variety. And then we submitted part of that for electron microscopy, which is, has much higher resolution. And there's where we saw a difference in the number, size, and density of those melanosomes in those melana for the pigmented cells. Dr. Cheng was struck by the fact that these same three differences apply to light versus dark skin humans. Our skin also varies in the size, number, and intensity of pigments. The team then isolated the gene responsible for skin pigmentation in the zebrafish and showed that a mutation caused the golden variety's pale skin. So this must be the one between, unless you, this is average. Out of curiosity, the researchers examined the databases listing all the human genes. Surprise, they found a very similar gene, SLC24A5. But how could they find out whether the gene had the same function in humans as in zebrafish? They tried an experiment, injecting the human gene into the golden zebrafish. Jason Mest did the procedure, and it worked. When injected with the human gene, the embryo of the golden variety developed darker markings. Add a human gene and a zebrafish can change its stripes. It was progress, but not the breakthrough they were looking for. Now Dr. Cheng had to show that humans had a mutation comparable to that of the golden zebrafish that would explain lighter skin in people. Research work, like music, requires keen intuition and subtle interpretation combined with a great capacity for analysis. The geneticist called in fellow researcher Victor Canfield and an anthropologist, Mark Shriver. <laughs> they set out to find a mutation, but not just anyone. 
It had to affect nearly everyone with light skin or the population with European ancestry. The mutation also had to be almost totally absent from other populations. In the HapMat catalogs, these circles represent the frequency of the gene's various mutations in four populations, European, Chinese, Japanese, and Nigerian. The researchers' job consisted in finding a group made up of a circle of one color and three circles of another. One day, they hit upon just such a combination, one blue circle for the European population and three red ones for the other populations. It was a very striking finding, and it, and it, you know, it wasn't quite the aha moment it could have been until you know, Mark Shriver, who's who's done more of this work, realized that the frequencies are not only unusual but but extremely unusual. You know that this is you know, very few genes show that pattern. In this case, that you know we have almost 100 percent of one variant in one population, and almost zero percent of the same variant in other populations. The mutation identified in the circles consisted in a unique change, A for the European population, which becomes G in all the other populations. The letters A, C, T, and G represent the building blocks of DNA. One tiny change among the hundreds of thousands of possible combinations in the human genome. The researchers then showed that the gene played a central role in the evolution of European skin color. It was like winning the lottery. So there are three billion uh, bases in our genome. One letter of that, which changes one amino acid in this protein, seems to be responsible for the evolution of lighter skin color in Europeans. But the gene doesn't explain the difference in skin color between blacks and Asians. Other as yet undiscovered genes are likely involved. Still, it is the most important skin color gene yet discovered. We have the zebrafish to thank, not to mention Mr. Ba for the inspiration. The discovery casts new light on an old theory. It actually provides very great support for other people's work uh, that, that have tried to explain why uh, people have lighter skin in Europe, uh, which is that in order to uh, not get rickets, uh, because we need vitamin D from the sun, we have to be exposed to that in our skin, uh, you need lighter skin in order to make enough vitamin D to not get rickets to live further north. According to the theory, some 200,000 years ago, the first modern humans, black Africans, started migrating outside Africa. Anyone carrying the mutation for light skin was better protected against rickets. This is allegedly how the mutation spread throughout northern regions. Dr. Cheng's research does not prove this theory. But by showing that the original skin color of humans was black and that whiteness is a recent mutation in evolutionary terms, it doesn't contradict it. It's also a way of saying that whatever our skin color, our ancestors were black. As a doctor, Cheng saw applications for the discovery in the fight against skin cancer and other diseases. This is a very important cancer susceptibility gene because uh, lighter skinned people get a lot of skin cancer. Uh, it also causes susceptibility to uh, acquired uh, form of blindness, uh, uh, age-related macular degeneration. Uh, and uh, perhaps this gene could be a target for uh, treating melanoma, which is a very deadly de cancer. As a geneticist, Cheng felt profound joy at solving a mystery of human biology, skin color. But as a man who faced discrimination because of his skin color, he saw it as a warning and a chance to contemplate what it means to talk about race. For one thing, we need to establish any time the term race is brought up, are you doing this work to compare, to make value judgments, to put people down? Well, we're not interested in those discussions as scientists, hopefully. Um, 
But on the other hand, if it's to understand differences, to understand biology, to uh, um, celebrate difference, for, uh, for example, then it's fine to talk about it. And we need to recognize, secondly, that it's a very complex term. So it includes things that are genetic, such as pigment, shapes of the body, um, but it also includes factors that are not genetic, language, uh, customs, nationality, religion. None of those are genetic. Those are sociological. But I think it's time that we can we join and help clarify the use of this uh, term and to make our discussion more sophisticated.